Hello and welcome to the Wedding Dish Podcast. Grab your fork and knife and take a seat at our table as we dish on all things weddings. You'll hear stories and tips from real couples and wedding pros alike about love, life, and entrepreneurship. I am Sarah Alipin, the host of The Wedding Dish and CEO of Photos from the Hardy and District Bliss. Today, our little Frenchie friend is uh, snoozing away in a sunspot on the floor. You may be able to hear him snoring. That seems to be his MO these days. Um, (laughs) And um, I'm really excited to be dishing today about how to make the honeymoon feelings last because, you know, sometimes when we get back from the honeymoon, it's kind of like, so what now? Um, (laughs) And you've got a lot of long life ahead of you. So we have the amazing human behind the Blissful Marriage, Carolyn Hauser with us today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to dish with you. Um, So uh, I have a million questions and I (laughs) am so (laughs) excited. Don't we all? (laughs) So um, let's start from the beginning. Um, Tell us a little bit about what you do um, in The Blissful Marriage. Yeah, so my own story was that I had a lot of struggle with relationships. They just would start out great. I've been married three times, and two of those marriages started out amazing, you know, super in love, super in the honeymoon, and then they would just deteriorate. And it 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 was heartbroken heartbreaking that that would happen and my friends kind of knew this and they saw me struggle and one of them luckily came across a book that um that she thought was a little suspicious but since she knew that I was kind of desperate because I really wanted to figure out how I could make relationships last she handed me the book and said just read this and just see if this is making sense and so in the book the woman basically talked about how our sex life and the way our sex life impacts our hormones has a lot to do with us either staying in love or not staying in love. And so my background is really in um, trauma healing, sexual trauma healing. Um, I do a lot of childhood trauma healing and so forth. So that's what I had already been doing at that point. And then when I came across this book and and the the neuroscience in the book, so many things just clicked. And so when I work with people, um, it's not therapy, it's not coaching, it's very much teaching people how to rewire their brains so that the correct neurochemistry, because honeymoon feelings are a, a chemical cocktail, right? And they usually are there because there's something new and exciting. And when the new and exciting goes away, then that then that cocktail stops. But there's actually things or there's a way to make love um, that keep that cocktail going forever if you stick to the specific diet, basically, or the specific recipe to um, prompt those hormones, you know? That's so fascinating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. For my first question here is that must be really hard to unpack other people's trauma. Um. No, not any, not anymore. And also, um, the method that I'm trained in is a very gentle. It's not, it's not very, you know, it's not loud or cathartic or extreme or anything. Um, trauma really, you know, a lot of people think that trauma has to do with mental health or psychology or anything like that. And in my own experience, trauma has much more to do with energy and your nervous system. Too much energy that you couldn't basically um, deal with when it happened and then it just got stuck in your body and in your nervous system and so what I do is very much helping it just helping the energy to move out of your body so there's you know it's it's not scary or re-traumatizing or anything like that I know there's methods out there where you know it can get really extreme and in my in my opinion that doesn't help you really because it just re-interests the nervous system and there's ways a lot of it has to do with teaching people things that they can do with their own body and their own nervous system to just metabolize that energy. So it's, you know, it's very different than probably what people think. A lot of people are scared of going there, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this this approach, yeah, we live everything, right? So it's it's just very different. You really just go to the energetic imprint and the method that I know that I'm trained in just helps release the energy. And you might feel, you know, you feel something, but it's usually relief, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, um, 
not to go too deep into my personal story, but I have PTSD <laughs> yeah. from an attack that was not sexual. Yeah. Um, and the for me, the sensation is that my adrenal system gets into like kicked yeah. into overdrive. Yeah. So everything that you just said makes total yeah. sense to me. Yeah. Um, so that's really fascinating. And that actually, that makes me like, that makes my heart happy for you and for the people that you work with. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I'm obviously, you know, I'm, I, I was in the same boat where I just, you know, had so much trauma, I needed to find ways to help myself, you know. And so I can say that, you know, I, I've been on the other end, and I feel I don't have PTSD anymore. It's completely gone, you know. So that's it's amazing. possible, you know. Congratulations on Thanks. that. That yeah, is a huge freedom. accomplishment. It's freedom, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it is that is exactly how I would describe it. I am also in remission. So. Yeah. yeah, and as you know, you know when you, when we all to some extent have these PTSD like problems and in relationships that's when it gets tricky, right? When we trigger each other and our brains go into the adrenaline and fight or flight and we can't think clearly and feel clearly and that's when we have problems generally. And again, yeah. it's just because of the chemicals, you know, in a sense, that are yeah, flooding our blood. Yeah, shut down and pull inward. Yeah. Um, oh, that makes so much sense. Um, I didn't realize this was the direction that we were going to go here. <laughs> it's perfect, though. I mean, this is the useful stuff that people need, you know? Yeah, this is the stuff that people don't always know, not everybody talks about. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I love it. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you're here to talk with us a little bit about that. Um, and it doesn't have to be heavy, you know, like it doesn't have to, it can be fun at the same time, you know, it, like healing does not have to be all drudgery and hard work and, you know, there might be moments, but there's also a lot of like lightness along the way. Yeah. It doesn't have to be all tears yeah. or anger. Yeah. <laughs> um. So what made you so passionate about I, – I know your story made you passionate about um, about this connection and, and moving past anything that was standing in the way of, of having that deep connection. But what made you so passionate about helping others maintain that happy, healthy sexual relationship and that bond in, in a marriage to, um, to really like – stay in that, you know, honeymoon euphoria space. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, this might sound corny depending on, you know, where you're at and you're like on your spiritual beliefs and so forth. But I literally, I literally remember being in heaven and God saying, there's problems done on earth. Men and women don't get along. We need helpers. Who wants to go? And my hand raising itself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> which got me a ticket to here and um so I, I I really feel it's my purpose my purpose is to have it for myself and to help you know inspire and just be on the journey you know there's I'm not not further along than anybody else like let's do this together let's create a new paradigm where men and women actually have paradise to get like to me being blissfully bonded and having this amazing connection is paradise right and I believe we can have it now on earth not just someday when we die you know yeah. So Yeah, and yeah. it's really important. You know, it's I think one of the stereotypical things about marriage, you hear a lot of those stereotypical things yeah. at, like in movies or in different places like um a lot of those say like I I'm trying to think of a, an example that isn't like completely asinine, but the only one that's coming to my brain is the um um, oh, well, now you're just going to have one vagina for the rest of your life yeah. or whatever. Um, so a lot of the stereotypes surrounding marriage are that at some point it gets a little bit monotonous, it gets a little bit boring. Um, and, you know, for some people that may be the, the case, but that doesn't have to be the case. And I, I really appreciate that you're here in order to help people not have that be the case. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's that, you know, this is actually a great example because, um, so when we go to the science, when we go to biology, um, there's ways to make love work. Well, if we just do what we normally do, that will biology, like by biology lead to us getting bored with each other because nature wants us to be interested in novel things so that we keep making out and having babies with different people just for the survival of the species. So if we just leave things up to, 
you know, its natural way. Yes, most most marriages do end up there. Some people figure this out naturally. I think there's statistics that say 13% of couples figure out how to find a happy medium where um, they escape this, what's called the mating program, basically. The mating program where after a time they get disinterested with each other sexually and just become roommates. So 13% of couples find a way out of that and just stay in that happy honeymoon. And the rest of us, we kind of just like struggle along the way. Um, I think one third of marriages just becomes sexless and gives up on sex and is harmonious, but doesn't have sex. And then the other third, they stay together and they have, you know, intimacy, but it's on a huge roller coaster usually. Like they're close and then they have eruptions and, and it's all based on not knowing how to make love in this other way that creates really a, a different hormonal cocktail, you know, so. That's really interesting. So what are some tips you have for couples in order to create that um, that hormonal cocktail that is going to be sustainable over long periods of time? Yeah, so what I'm going to share might, might come as a shocker. And just to preface it or to frame it, um, the reason why my friend was really suspicious of giving me the book was because she was also kind of in shock. And at that, t- at that time, um, I was very much a proponent of women's empowerment and having lots of orgasms and lots of sex every day and how good that is for you. That's where I came from. Um, and so the, what the book was suggesting is that actually the actual orgasm is the problem. So if we can learn to make love in a way where we, so basically nature connected orgasm, um, to procreation so that we do it right because it's like such a highly pleasurable event in our brain neurochemically speaking well what we don't know is that there's a different hormonal cocktail which feels just as good if not better because it creates a lot of stability um if we if we basically don't go for making babies and so i, I just wanted to preface it because when people especially men and also women hear that at the first they're like carolyn you're crazy there's no way i'm gonna you know I'm, I'm like sex Give without or- orgasm. Yeah, like that's the good part. That's where we bond. You know, people think that when we come together, right, that's the moment that we bond. But if you actually look at it on a from like a neurochemical and on brain scans, the moment a man or a woman has an orgasm, it's the same exact neurochemical um, event in our brain as shooting heroin or cocaine. I mean, you wouldn't do that, right? Would you just like get up and take some cocaine right now? Right. It's not for me, no. Exactly. So you know, exactly. So, so, and the reason is because you know it's not good for you. It's going to put you on a roller coaster. It's going to mess with everything, right? It's going to make you addicted. It's going to mess up your life. Like, but I mean, literally, dopamine, which is released in that moment, is thirteen times more addictive than heroin. So now there's a different way of love making that's just way slower and with a lot more. Um, not necessarily what we know is foreplay, but with a lot more touch with the intention, intent of giving and comforting. Um, they're bonding clues. So our, our brain is wired to um, secrete oxytocin based on very specific, specific, specific bonding cues. And they have to do with like the original mother-child bond, but we can also use it as adults. So eye gazing, synchronizing your breathing, listening to the heartbeat of the other person those things will start basically releasing the oxytocin. When you have an oxytocin cocktail in your body, you feel amazing, you know, like you're not missing anything. And so it might take a little while, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a transition time. And this is why people, people like me to help them, you know, because you have to wean your brain kind of from the dopamine and there's might be a little bit of a phase of like things feeling boring and, you know, versus going and stuff. But once uh, you do enough of the bonding behaviors and there is, there's lots of love making, like we, we make love sometimes twice a day, but for sure once a day, um, that, um, that the oxytocin just builds on each other. And instead of being on a roller coaster, like having, you know, uh, an amazing, uh, orgasm and close ex- feeling experience and then kind of like feeling the distance again with the oxytocin, you just feel closer and closer and closer. And it's just kind of like a consistent upward spiral. And it has the effect of like really relaxing your brain and your nervous system. So everything gets better in your life because your perceptions get better. Um, You just feel like, like when you're in a really happy, good feeling place, things flow. Right. And then, and it's to me, the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because 
it is really a way of creating a magical life together because your energy gets in such a good place with each other that you're basically unstoppable. You know, it's like, it's my secret weapon for power couples. <laughs> That's so interesting. So <clears throat> essentially you've taken, so you've looked at brain chemistry from, you know, which makes sense. I mean, if any of us have ever looked at, you know, what, um, what any of the mood stabilizers or any of the medications do, any pharmaceuticals do (laughs) are going to be changing the chemistry in our brains, um, then all of these chemicals sound familiar, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you don't, I, I hadn't personally thought about them associated with sex, although I had heard some of these things before because I remember um, reading something in high school where if the, where sex ha- could have the same effect or something as coffee. So when you said the thing about cocaine, I was like, oh, that makes sense because that's not it, like it, a yeah, it's huge basically, leap. It's basically the only natural high that we can get, you know, without taking drugs. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. That makes total sense. Yeah. Um and so I you know I did not come up with this with the science. Um Marnia Robinson who wrote the book that I had found, she spent 16 years experimenting with this, um figuring it out. First she found um hints that you know like regular sex wasn't that good and orgasms weren't so good in like more the Hindu traditions, tantric texts, Taoist love making practices and then she started practicing and just experimenting with it. And first they thought it was just, you know, it was just men. It was really not good for men. But then in her own experience, she realized, no, this is not good for me either. Like, I feel so way different. And, you know, she she started just trying it out. She started trying out how she feels when she has an orgasm. And she started trying out how she felt when she's just stuck to the bonding. And she felt so vastly different. And then she met her, who became her husband. And he had already been, like, really involved in neuroscience and had already a bunch of studies on the brain. and um he was really into um, researching what porn does to men's brain and how the addiction there happened. And so when they, when Marnia and her husband came together, then they kind of put two and two together and they spent 16 years just gathering and gathering and, and creating that book that changed the one that changed my life. So yeah, I highly recommend reading that book. It's called Cupid's Poisoned Arrow. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'll try to find the link to that and link to it in our yeah. show notes for the wedding dish because that sounds – it sounds fascinating. Uh, I love things that involve like brain chemistry. I yeah. think it's so fascinating yeah. how I, the brain is just like such a crazy thing. Yeah. And, it, you know, we're capable of so much. We only use 10% of our capability. If we find ways to really, work, you know, use this the way God gave it to us, we can have amazing lives and amazing relationships and do amazing things, you know. Yeah, so I, I give this, yeah. I give that book to anyone that, you know, is getting married or I'm like, I'm very obnoxious that way. I, I live in Sedona and there's lots of, you know, weddings and officiants and I try to connect with them and say, hey, like, could you just hand this to the people? Because like, I know where they're going to go. You know, I know if they don't have it, you know, chances are that they're going to end up with the one, out, you know, one out of three or three. Out, yeah, a third, I think, of the marriages that are sexless, you know, so. Jeez, I yeah, can't. It's huge. The number is huge, and people don't talk about it. You know, there's so much shame around it, and there really is. There really is. Like, I, you know, it, it's crazy how much shame our society um, puts, like, surrounds sex with. Well, and um, it feels it's, like it's such a-, a failure. You know, people get married and they're so happy, and then they don't want to admit that you know it's gone away, right? So, and you don't yeah. want it to have gone away. It's very painful. Yeah, I mean, you've built a, a really strong relationship, um, not unlike a friendship, it with someone, um, and then to have it change in any way is very jarring, unsettling. There's a lot of shame and guilt and and blame yeah. when that happens. Um, yeah, 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 and you know, it's it it's hard when anything changes, and and things change throughout your life, obviously. Yeah. So. Um, and moving you know, is a huge change. Yeah. Having kids, like yeah. all of those things. I was going to say, most people blame it on the kids. You know, they say, well, we had kids and then her hormones changed, but it's not that. You know, it is not that. It's the way we make love. That's really yeah. fascinating because that is another statement that's made a lot in society yeah. where um, it's like, oh, well, then we had kids and, you know, yeah, exactly. and we're then, too tired. Exactly. Or, um, 
yeah, that, I mean, yes, like when you have a transitional period in time, but if you get stuck in that, then that's probably the place where you need to reconnect in some capacity um, and maybe find someone like Carolyn that is able to help you reconnect um, in whatever that looks like. But um, yeah, that's really interesting. Or, you know, ideally people come to me before they even disconnect and just learn this, you know, so that it never goes away. That's the ideal, really. Yeah, that would be that would be the ideal situation. It's like it's almost like preventative medicine. Exactly. Yeah, no, it is. You know, like if somebody like if you could have the key to making your marriage last on the honeymoon feeling, like why would you know? Like why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually curious because, um, and I am of course I'm not an expert in this, but. I know I've heard this before and it could be something society just tells me, so I could be totally wrong here, but isn't it true that most, like a lot of women have trouble having an orgasm to begin with? I don't know if it's a lot, but it's definitely, there's some women, you know, and in my, in my world, I'm like, you're lucky because your brain hasn't even gotten on the, you know, dopamine train, right? A lot yeah. of women come to me and like, oh, can you, like, they think I'm a sex therapist, right? So they come and like oh, can you finally teach me how to orgasm? I'm like, hold on for a moment. You're actually lucky <laughs> because you don't have to train and, you know, train your brain from the orgasm. You can just learn this new way and be really good at it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess if I never had coffee, I might not know I needed it in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and if you could learn a way to be totally naturally energized all the time, you know, you wouldn't need coffee. That's true. That's because true. coffee doesn't, you know, there are side effects. Like this other way doesn't have side effects. It just makes you naturally feel really, really good. There's no heart palpitations. There's no dehydration. There's no acidity for the stomach, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And depending on how much coffee you're drinking exactly. versus. And, and usually you need more and more as time goes on. And then your adrenals get depleted. And then you need even more. And then at some point your body's just like, I've had enough, you know. Yeah, and it can impact my sleep at night if I have it too if I have too much during the day. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing happens with wine. <laughs> yeah. And you know the thing that sold me there, the thing that ultimately sold me on this was um I I went on YouTube and I checked out Marniani. She had some videos on YouTube and in the videos I think she was already in her 70s. And the way she looked and the glow she had after, you know, they were married for 30 years at that point, something like that. I was like I want what she has. Oh my God. Like she is so happy. She's so glowing. She's like, she has the fountain of youth. Basically she's discovered, you know, the fountain of youth. I need to have this. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, okay. On that note, we are going to take a fast break on the wedding dish and we will be right back with Carolyn Hauser in just a minute. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Wedding Dish. I am Sarah Alipin, your hostess with The Mostess, and today I am dishing with the human behind Blissful Marriage, Carolyn Hauser. Um, we have been talking about so many great things today. I'm totally fascinated by the work that you do and your philosophy. Um, I would love to know, outside of coming to you before they exit the honeymoon phase, what advice or some, what are some tips that you have for newer couples? Um, the most important thing is to start doing lots and lots of bonding behaviors, which is really like what we did as teenagers, you know, when we were afraid of having sex and we were all nervous, you know, and like, <laughs> and like, Oh God, you know? And so just lots of kissing, lots of skin to skin. Um, the, the most important part for the brain to switch is that you receive and give touch with the intent of comforting. So not, you know, usually when we're adult people, we touch to turn somebody on so we can have sex. And in the brain that registers that someone's just wanting something from us, mostly for the women, men sometimes too, you know, but that's more an issue for the women. So if you guys can practice giving to each other, either through massages or kisses or um, so one of the bonding behaviors is, for example, stroking, stroking the head with the intent of, co intent of comforting. Like the more you do these things, holding hands, just, you know, touch gestures that communicate I love you, that will really register in our brain as like this person wants to bond with me, it's safe to be with, and that will kind of keep the, keep the oxytocin flowing. 
And then I do have videos on YouTube. So, you know, other than coming to Sedona or working in another way with me online, uh, one of, uh, one of a good ways to just start getting familiar with the stuff is to go to the YouTube channel and there's lots of free resources. And we'll link out to that in the show notes as well. Um, what about people who didn't have that experience as teenagers? You know, people who like either their parents weren't particularly touchy humans or they, you know, maybe were just really shy and didn't have relationships um, where they could experiment with any of that type of behavior as teenagers or young adults. And then they're going into getting married. Um, Do you have any like insight into that? Yeah, you you know, it's literally like learning a new skill. So you can do it even with being closed, you know, starting by just learning to look into each other's eyes and breathing or putting your head on his chest or her chest and listening to the heartbeat, right? Those things are pretty non-threatening. So just start there, you know, and then if you get more comfortable, you can give each other's massages, you know, and progress. But, you know, kissing and French kissing is good and look like looking at each other. I think we're, most of us are comfortable with that. Yes, yeah. yes. The, I always associate the things that you're talking about with um, the things that used to like make your st- like where you would feel electricity or exactly your stomach yes. flip. Exactly, and that's what the oxytocin does. You will actually start feeling really electrified and just really yummy, you know. Yeah, that with, makes sense. Without any genitals being involved for you know for for the moment, not that they are not involved at all, but yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so what about couples who have been married for a while, like, and they now are starting to feel like they're stuck in a rut or like they've just got a routine, um, where it's like, you know, uh, just get this over with, um, kind of, kind of situation. Do you have any, um, like insight or, or tips or advice for that kind of, um, couples who are in that space? It's the same. And I mean, with most couples, you know, the, the challenge is, to actually make the space and the time. And most of us are subconsciously not programmed for spaciousness and leisure time with each other. We're programmed for like giving ourselves, you know, sacrificing ourselves and working hard. So generally um, you do need a little help with your subconscious to get those programs removed basically so that you can, can find the time because we all do have the time, you know? Yeah. 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 One of, um, one of my biggest pet peeves in life is when people say, I don't have time for yeah. X, Y, Z. Yeah. I haven't had time to, um, you know, post to social media yeah. for my business. And I'm like, look, like you have time. Like, yeah. If you have time to go take a walk or, um, you know, brush your teeth, like you have time. I mean, that's basic need. Yeah. but It's just prioritizing, um, right? Yes, yeah. it's prioritizing. And, you know, it's if you've deprioritized something, then exactly. that's fine. But like, and and you should deep, you can't prioritize everything yeah. at all times. But when people say they don't have time, it grinds my yeah. ears. Yeah. Because I'm like, you have time for what you make time for. Yeah. And, you know, if that means that you have to change what you were doing for five minutes or maybe like you weren't scrolling for five minutes or whatever. Like if you've opened Facebook, you have time for anything yeah. today. <laughs> and you know, the same thing, like people, you, you can't expect to have an amazing anything if you're not willing to invest time into it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the most important things in life are often the things that we neglect the exactly. most too. You know, at the end of the life, what most matters is like the quality of our relationships. And sometimes I feel like people are just sleepwalking through life and living. So on autopilot, trying to make everybody else happy when like at the end of your life, it matters whether you lived your life and you made yourself happy and you allowed yourself the time and the quality and you know, the, the bliss and the pleasure. And we're not here to suffer and like suffer through life and just stretch through it and then be done with it. And I was like, okay, that was it. Uh -uh. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, there is a reason that we we talk about self care because yeah. usually that's the thing that gets deprioritized yeah. first. But you know, building your relationship and nurturing your relationship is is a piece of self care because yes. that's a happy home. And if you don't have a health happy home, then nothing will work. Wearing a you know putting a mask on to moisturize your face isn't going to make it exactly. <laughs> 
Yeah. It is it is funny the the buzz things that we hear in society that we like, oh I, I have to do this hair mask. Yeah. Um that's gonna make the difference yeah. in my weekend. But you know, I I don't have the time to um sit down and and breathe with my partner for fifteen minutes. Yeah. But I've marathoned, I've binged this show yeah. for the third time. <laughs> See, and so the thing is, when people get married, they think that by getting married, they create the sacred, special, spiritual union by giving each other the promise. And and the, the, and then the reality is, like, they're stuck in everyday life, and there's no magic, there's no nothing sacred, and the bond goes away. So the misunderstanding or the where the ignorance is or what people don't know is that a sacred union is a practice. You know, you wouldn't go to the muscle booth one day and think you're going to be like in ripped shape by p- pushing weights one time. If you want to have an amazing body, you do it every day and you don't stop. You know, you maintain. Same thing with this bond. This bond needs to be nurtured and kept alive by putting energy into it and getting energy out of it. And so, you know, the, having a sacred or a special union is a daily practice. It's not a yes. one-time event. I'm so with you on that. Um, and, and a lot of times what I see is people who are in in that space then are like, oh, well, we just can't have a TV in the bedroom or we can't have phones in the bed. To, what is your experience? I'm curious what your experience is with that because I have my own opinions about that, but this is not where my profession yeah. lies. <laughs> Yeah. I don't have I'm, professional I mean, expertise you know, here. I, I do think it's important that you have time away from all screens and so forth because you're really not connecting with each other when you're at screen. And there's nothing wrong with watching TV and stuff, you know, every once in a while. But if that's all you do, you know, then you're not really connecting with each other. For the for the oxytocin to start flowing, you need to be with each other undistracted, undistracted oh. attention. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> My, uh, our tech just arrived. Yeah. You know, in the in the blissful marriage method, we actually teach people lifestyle, right? Because when we wake up, we make love, and then we have certain rituals that we do together. Like we like just we have a little altar, and we like sitting in front of it and meditating together and chanting and stuff. But not that that's everybody's, but you have to have some kind of you know. We recommend having some kind of routine. Cool. And we have and we have we have it scheduled. You know, we have scheduled things that we do in the morning and in the evening, and then one time a week we have a long like afternoon stretch where we have the uninterrupted time to give each other massages and things. So we do put them, we put, we don't leave it up to chance, you know, it's in our schedules and it's how we start our day and it's how we end our day. Very intentional and kind of like routinized, but the routines give you, give you the energy and the support and the nurturing. And so your nervous system can relax and it makes it so that you feel really like your needs are met in every department, you know, and then you function much differently when, when you are a person who feels deeply satisfied, you know, sexually and everything you're a different person <laughs> you're no longer That's the grumpy so- bitch you know <laughs> yeah nag the nag <laughs> you're no longer stressed I mean, out yeah. and frustrated exactly <laughs> takes one to know and- <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting and you know it it is funny how um I always feel like, you know, at least in in my case, when I start saying things like, um, we need to not do this, or we need to change this, it's that I don't have a solution for what I'm feeling. Yeah. So instead of putting something into a routine, I'm trying to remove something yeah. because that's what stress does, yeah. right? We're like, okay, I need something off my plate because I'm stressed yeah. out. But we don't think about how sometimes adding something in, like what you're you yeah. just we're explaining, you know, you have added things into your routine that make everything that make work it, better. Yeah. yeah. And we often think of it in the complete opposite direction. That's so true. That's such a good point. Yeah. And it's just, it's kind of counterintuitive, even yeah. though, yeah. um, yeah. yeah, it's counterintuitive to take more time, you know, when you already don't feel like you have a lot of time. <laughs> I love how my dog is just having a bark fest over here. <laughs> Clues open. He's like, yes, 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 I agree. Yeah. <laughs> he he has been completely silent for this entire season of the wedding day. Oh, and now <laughs> Yeah, now he's just voicing all of the opinions. He's singing the praises. Oh, yeah. 
we love it. We love to hear him. I love to hear him. <laughs> He's so funny. Uh- <laughs> Well, good thing my I, husky. Good thing my husky isn't hearing him because he would start like really singing. <laughs> oh, jeez! You have a husky. They oh, yeah. do sing. Yeah. Oh my goodness! He never barks. <laughs> the only time that you will hear him is when the sirens go by, and he'll just start like singing with them. It's the craziest thing. <laughs> It's so funny. I recently read that dogs, um, like they hear sirens and they they think that it's a dog. It's very similar to like the pitch yeah. or pattern of howling, um, and it's a pack dynamic thing, which is so funny. Yeah, he'll to totally me. he'll totally go off no matter how far that way they are. He's just gonna sit there and like. Wah! <laughs> that's hysterical. And they huskies, uh-huh. their bark to me sounds like singing. <laughs> Yeah, they don't really bark. They just howl. They really just howl. Yeah. They're so funny. Oh, my goodness. The Cluzo alarm would definitely be setting off your husky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners? Um, I do want to share that if anybody is interested in having a little bit more spiritual um aspect to you know before they get married or do something you know um i do not officiate marriages but i help people really create a sacred union and kind of give them some ideas of how to maintain it and i create a little um ceremony with them and some promises that they can give each other that are more practical and really attainable and we're in sedona so it's beautiful you know it's it's a nice thing for people to do that's something people could do if they want to do something special and extra just for themselves um outside of their traditional wedding ceremony Yes. Yeah. I love that. I love the idea of if you elope, but you still wanted to do something that feels like a spiritual experience too. Yeah. Um, and Sedona, the if you haven't, if you all haven't been to S- Sedona in Arizona, it is. Um, it's kind of like if you turned the Grand Canyon upside down, you get that kind of rock formation. You know, where it's like these beautiful. It's the inverse. So they grow. You know, the rock formations go up instead of. We're, you know, we're in the cauldron. Yeah. We're in a vortex, yeah. as they say. Yeah, and it's just beautiful. Um, and it's it's actually one of my favorite experiences in Sedona um, was when my husband and I, um, my my in laws live five months out of the year, six months out of the year in Tucson, and the other um, in Mexico. And so when we went out the first time to see their new place. Um, we went to Sedona and we had like the full gamut of weather. So it was like torrential downpour, yeah. then heavy, heavy fog. And then it cleared into like normal, what people think of stereotypical Sedona, which is like beautiful sun. Yeah. We're in high um, desert, you know? So yeah. 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 So it was like a really fun, like full ride of weather and like total different perspective. And you can watch that rain roll in from so far. It's just it's a very it's a place where you can really truly connect to the land yeah. um and the earth and and the universe cuz the sky oh my gosh yeah so if you're looking for a place to and then, and then with each other you know because you can like the connection is so strong here it's easy to connect with each other and just fill yourself up and yeah 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 take it really is with you you know for the rest of your yeah. life take some energy with you some good energy yeah I'm so with you on that. Oh my gosh. Well, maybe you need to come. Maybe you need to come. (laughs) I know. Gosh, I haven't been out there since pre pandemic. (laughs) You're one of the few people because everybody during the pandemic came to Sedona because it was the only place you were allowed to travel. That's what it felt like. (laughs) Yeah, and you could be outside and socially distanced. But yeah, yeah, but we're DC to Sedona is a bit of a drive. And there was a period where flying felt. Yeah. Like you didn't know what the, yeah. we're out of that period, yes. luckily, but <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, Carolyn, thank you so much for joining me today on The Wedding Dish. Where can people find you online? The easiest is really my website and it's just my name, Carolyn, C-A-R-O-L-I-N, Hauser, H-A-U-S-E-R.com. And then on YouTube under my name, on Facebook under my name, those are the best ways really. 
Perfect. And we'll link to all of that in the show notes so that it's super easy for you all to get there. And actually, um, depending on which podcast platform you're listening to, there should be a clickable link in the description. Um, It just depends on, you know, like Apple lets you do that, but not all of them do. So I always put the clickable link in if I can. So it's super easy for the listeners to just get on right there and connect. Um, So Um, While you are finding Carolyn Hauser online, if you would like to check us out, we are on Instagram at The Wedding Dish Podcast, and we are on uh, our website is theweddingdishpodcast.com, and you can grab show notes, which will be lots of information from today with all of the links, and we'll link to the book as well. Um, You can apply to be a guest. Um, You can sponsor us or donate if you would like to, so we can keep um, sharing juicy wedding tips and tricks from couples and wedding pros alone like. And then don't forget to tune in next week. We've got another amazing guest and um, follow, rate, review all the good stuff on your favorite podcasting app. And until next time, cheers, everybody.